Okay, guys, uh, super hoping that this time you can hear my mic. This time is going to work. Uh, I am live at the moment. So if you're watching this video, um, the subject of the video is how I learned Polish. I first came to Poland in 2007, uh, 13 years ago, and I've got 13 years of experience of learning Polish. So if you're watching this video, it's for anyone who is interested in the subject. You're either thinking of moving to Poland or you already have, and you want to learn enough Polish to be able to speak to your... in Yay, the sound is working. You want to learn enough Polish to be able to speak to your uh, potential in-laws, like it was for me 13 years ago. Um, you want to make friends. You want to be able to maybe work in Polish. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I'm super, super sorry for the technical problems we have with the setup. I am going to present to you today, guys, 15 top tips for learning Polish, and I'm not going to rush. I'm going to take my time to talk to you today about a subject which is a passion of mine. It's occupied my life for 13 years. If you have a question about learning Polish, you can ask at any time. And in the future, if you're watching this video after we've gone live, if you write to me, I'll try and make sure that I reply to every single comment. So we're going to talk about top tips. We've got 15 of them. Um, I'm going to talk about some common misconceptions and I might even say lies about the Polish language. And like I say, I'm not going to take my uh, I'm not going to rush today. So this is really for everybody who's super interested in the subject. If you're not interested in learning Polish, this is not the right place to come to. So guys, who am I to teach you about this subject? Um, well, if you go on to polishforums.com or .pl, there's a discussion from about 2015, 2014 about my Polish. And I, I took the best comments. Opie said he has poor to mediocre pronunciation. Atch said, the guy's accent and pronunciation being quite poor or simply nothing outstanding, especially if you take into account the time he spent on learning. Um, uh, Krigu, in effect, you listen to him like an educated Polish bum after three wines. <laughs> Guys, I think the fact that I'm smiling and laughing about people criticizing my Polish is maybe one of the reasons why I'm still in the country and I've done many things in Polish. So you can either decide that you don't want to listen to me and you have the same opinion that these guys have on polishforums.com or you can maybe bear in, uh, bear in mind a few things. First is that uh, uh, I came to Poland in 2007. I've been living um, fully in the country since 2010. I've interviewed the Polish Prime Minister in Polish twice about pretty complex uh, subjects. I've given easily 100 plus interviews on all of the major Polish TV stations in Polish. I've worked in Polish with animals, squirrels, children um, many times. And, and I've got to tell you, I've even cooked live on national television in Polish. And it was a massive disaster, not because my Polish language was bad, uh, but because um, the food was just terrible. But I'm British, so what can I say? Um, I passed the Polish exam at B2 level, which is intermediate advanced, I think. And I've worked in several different Polish companies in Polish. I currently run a business in Polish. So I don't pretend to be the world's best Polish language speaker. OK, that's not what it's about. If you're coming to some speak, some speaking expert, that's not it. But I think if you look at what Polish forum people said about me and what I've achieved since that time, maybe it's worth listening to me. Um, guys, uh, somebody's already written, you're too much educated. Just to let you know, I don't make any particular claim to be some kind of super linguist. I'm not one of these loser polyglot guys who goes on about how they've learned 55 languages and they can speak fluently. That's not what today's about. This is, um, I'm going to give you 15 top tips um, for normal people. Okay, I'm a perfectly normal person. Um, I will quickly just tell you about my journey. So I came in po to Poland in 2007 and I met my ex-girlfriends, you know, my ex-girlfriend's parents, and they didn't speak English. And this is a common um, this is a common challenge. By the way, guys, if you've got questions for me, you've got 25 people watching now. I'm super, I'm super happy that you're with me. Krzegorz, Trump 2020. Krzegorz, nie na ten temat, my drogi. Okay. <laughs> um, I came to Poland in 2007. And like many foreign people, it's a very typical journey. I couldn't speak to my in-laws. So we had gestures. That means beer, sleep, food. Mm. And of course, I learned a few words, but proper communication, no chance. Uh, I then started coming to Poland to uh, sing. I played in a band with this group, so they didn't really speak English either. So I was kind of the odd one out. I've gone through the very typical process of someone um, falling in love with a Polish girl, then falling in love with Poland 
being super interested in Polish history, Polish culture, not really knowing a lot about it, and coming to um, Poland in 2010. So for the last 10 years, I have um, been learning Polish, living here, trying to land on my own feet. And I've done all those things that I've talked about. And this year, I became a Polish citizen. So the Polish prime uh, president has given me Polish citizenship. It's a little different room. Kind of proud about that. So guys, I'm going to give you um, some tips uh, <laughs> we've got people talking about Trump here, guys. This is not the subject. So I'm going to give you 15 top tips, and I'm going to talk about each one um, in uh, in detail. We've got Jess here. I'd love to learn Polish for a love junk one. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I don't want to let him down and feel like I'm failing. There's some what pressure when, when I struggle. Uh, Jess, you've actually immediately touched a super important point I want to talk about. The number one reason why you're Polish will improve. Doesn't matter where you are right now, whether you don't know anything, started learning a few words, had your first classes, bought your first Hurrah Papal School book. The number one reason why your Polish will improve is your mindset. So a classic thing that people say when they come to me is, hey, Paddy, uh, I, I'm learning Polish. It's so hard. Or the Polish language is the hardest language in the world to learn. How am I going to do this? So the words we use have meaning. And if we come with the approach that this is super, super hard, then we will treat it as super, super hard. If we enjoy the, the beauty of learning a new Polish word, oczywiście, wabench, skondinond, you know, if we just roll these words around in our tongue and just drink them like we would a decent wine, well, that's a very different experience. If I sit there looking at a Polish book and go, this is so hard, I'm never going to do this, then what we say becomes true so people are like throwing difficult words for me right now i think treat it at the start as an accumulation of beautiful new words that are going to challenge your tongue and your palate and your lips and guys one of the things i've only learned recently is just how demanding it is because the polish words and and letters come from different places so guys i wasn't even planning to say this but one of the top tips you can do is learn about how you make vowels and sounds in your mouth because that will actually help you pronounce Polish better. But that's kind of like getting way ahead of myself. So think now, this is my first top tip, think now about the way you talk about learning Polish. Are you the kind of person who says, this is super hard, I'm never going to do this? Or I read an article which uh, which says it's one of the hardest languages in the world. Bull! No, nie mogę tego powiedzieć po angielsku. That is okay it's just absolutely ridiculous i'm going to talk about that now because this is directly related to mindset um if you see and you google on the world polish people will tell you polish is one of the hardest languages in the world to learn okay let's think about that if i'm chinese is it hard absolutely undeniably you know completely different vowel sounds different alphabet grammar structure everything if i'm ukrainian is polish hard still hard because learning all languages are hard uh, Grotto PL, Polish is very hard. I disagree. Polish is like many other languages. Some are more complex, but others have, you know, Polish, for example, what can we say is Polish? Polish is phonetic. So that whole problem with English uh, not being phonetic, completely gone. Um, Polish actually has quite a logical series of grammar structures. It depends where you come from. Um, Adam Byrne, do you recommend living in Poland will help learning? Absolutely. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Guys, I'm not rushing today. I'm going to really try and talk as much in as much detail as possible uh, about learning Polish today. So depending on where you come from, Polish will be more or less hard. Polish is not one of the hardest languages in the world to learn. And I'm not just saying that because I've learned a bit of Polish and I'm trying to show off. That's that's not what it's about. I have literally the t-shirt saying, I learned, Pol I've, I learned Polish, this is my superpower. But think about it like this way. Yes, some pronunciation will be hard, but Polish is phonetic. So once you learn, I mean, the pronunciation is just the first challenge. If you think that pronunciation is one of the hardest things in Polish to learn, you have no idea whatsoever. As I have learned all the cases, for example, in Polish, and I remember the first time in the first class in the UK, in London, when our teacher explained to us Mianovnik, the nominative case. I was like, what? The case? What does that even mean? Because we don't think about this in Polish. As I've grown and learned all of the cases, I just see them as so obvious now. And this is the whole point. When you are learning something for the first time, you don't know what you don't know and everything seems impossible. As you step up a level in learning, you become consciously incompetent. In other words, you know what you don't know. And that enormous 
huge, massive things that you don't know seems foreboding. Guys, the simple approach is this. Don't look at the mountain that you're climbing. Just look at the hill that you're walking up right now. Just look at the next word you have to learn. Just look at the next day, the next class, the next week. If you only focus on the task you have in hand this week and you stop thinking and telling yourself that Polish is absolutely the most impossible, most difficult language, you stop uh, listening to Polish people because your objective here is not to learn the language. Your objective here is to learn the word that you have to learn right now, the pronunciation of the word, the case that you're learning right now that you're exploring. Um, you just take each of these topics one by one. So pay attention. Tip number one, pay attention to um, the way you talk about the language. And by the way, I'm not saying that I had this straight up as this is a perspective after 13 years of learning Polish. But I definitely say if you think Polish is one of the hardest languages in the world, it will be hard. If you think, however, that it's an easily digestible, you can do it. You just have to work at it. Guys, here's the brutal truth. Spanish, which is commonly thought of as an easy language, is hard to learn if you can't be bothered, if you don't put any effort in, if you don't spend money, if you don't spend energy, if you don't a lot time, if you don't do your homework, Spanish will be hard. So what's going up in here will have a massive impact on whether you're going to be able to learn. Okay. Number two, if you were learning in a class of 100 people, how quick would you learn? One teacher, 100 people. Slowly, right? Because there'd always be some guy who doesn't understand something. You have to wait for that person to get explained and everyone's asking questions as the teacher. So if you were in a class of 50 people, would that be hard? Yeah, still, 50 people is a lot. If you're in a class of 10 people, is that hard? Well, yeah, because there's nine other people learning. The single most effective way that you will learn Polish is with two times 90 minute classes with a teacher on your own. Now, fortunately, language learning has gone virtual. So wherever you are in the world, you can do that. We had a question here um, from Adam. Do you recommend living in Poland will help learning? Absolutely. Game changer. And the reason why is um, input equals output, which we're going to talk about later. Grzegorz, all Slavic languages are the same. Well, not entirely. Okay. Um, anonymous Satan. Yes, that's true. We get afraid too early. Absolutely. This is about mindset. We're not here to learn Polish. We're here to learn the one word which is ahead of us. Just like any language, Polish has its own difficulties. Tam, to, ten, tam, to, tam, ten. Ben, that is not a difficult part of Polish learning. Loving your comments, guys. Keep on writing questions. Let's avoid American politics or Polish politics. Gregorz, peace or pal. Who cares? Who cares, really? I'm not interested. Um, so I highly recommend that you do two times 90-minute classes with a teacher each week. Um, this is because if you learn in a class, you'll save money, but you'll go as slow as the slowest member of your class. So I remember... Um, I was put in a two-person class, which is okay, but with a Chinese girl. It was back in 2011. So I had to sit there whilst the poor girl was trying to pronounce these difficult for her words like R, R, the letter R. R is not particularly hard for me to pronounce, but for her it was an absolute nightmare. I'm spending money having to wait for this person to be able to pronounce a letter. So you can find lots of people online, Cora Petitia Pell, there's all sorts of different places that you can go. Um, I highly recommend that you think about it, um, not learning in classes, learning with a teacher. The same is also true of homework. Guys, if you don't do homework, you're automatically not pushing yourself further forward. Number three, and this touches on something which is Adam has already talked about, input equals output. So when I was living in London between 2007 and 2010, I started doing classes. I wrote to my teacher. And I was one of seven guys uh, trying to learn Polish. Seven guys who all sat there when she explained the nominative case to us, which is the first case. It's the most easy case, Mianovnik in uh, Polish. And I remember the exact reaction look on everybody's faces. Flipping heck. This is mental. I remember that exact moment. Guys, nominative is so easy. So, so easy now in retrospect that I'm, I'm you know, I'm like embarrassed to say that I thought it was difficult. It's just the word as it is, essentially. Um, so here's the problem. The minute I came out of that Polish class, I had my English language phone out. I went back on the tube. Adverts were in English. I remember looking at the adverts and thinking, I've only learned Polish for this 60 minutes. And the minute I've left the class, I've gone back into English. I went back home and spent time with my English friends, etc. So my learning Polish, if you think about it as input, was one 60-minute class a week. And that's it. So how much are you going to learn in 60 minutes? 
Not very much, let's be honest. How much is there to learn? Well, Malcolm Gladwell talks about needing 10,000 hours to master a subject. And let's just say that's, that's our rough estimate. Well, if you're earning for one hour a week and you need to learn 10,000 hours to be a master or at least make significant progress, you need 10,000 weeks ahead of you. Um, I think the number one reason why I am where I, now, where I am now is because I've moved to Poland. And when I came to Poland in 2010, it was a little bit different. There were no expat groups on Facebook. I didn't even have the internet, guys. This is so embarrassing. I went back to look at my diaries and one of my problems was I had a little stick and it didn't work and didn't have any money because I didn't have any savings or any, you know, didn't really have regular income. So I didn't have the internet. So a lot of what's available now, like YouTube videos, YouTube tutorials, Facebook groups, um, online learning wasn't available at the time. But I didn't have any English friends. I wasn't in that environment. I was in a Polish only environment. The TV was in Polish. The adverts were in Polish. The bus announcements were in Polish. The people I was talking to were in Polish. Uh, and I was living in Poland, the shop, everything. So in terms of learning to swim, it was literally the case of someone dunking you in the water. So I'm not suggesting that you have to move to Poland to only learn Polish, but being realistic, your progress, if you think about it as a rate of improvement, is going to be zoom if you're living in a foreign country. Whereas if you're living in Poland, you're going to go like that. I live in Poland. I've had lessons for three years and plenty of attempts at input from various sources. I can still barely say what I want in a shop, says Vonatar. Okay, so Vonatar, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of tips. I want you to think about yourself. Um, Sirifani Tuta, uh, so, sorry, said, it's all about immersing yourself into it. Absolutely agree. Input equals output. Vonatar, I ask you now, my friend, how many hours realistically are you working on your Polish language, even though you live in Poland? One hour? 10 hours? Let's, let's come back to that. So um, number four, understand your learning style. What works for you may not work for someone else. So I used to go around telling people, this is the way to learn Polish. And I had a great chat with a guy, Paul Webster. I hope he's watching today. And I realized that he's a mathematician. He's a very process orientated, logical, likes everything to be in the right order, A, B, C, D, E, F, G kind of guy. And for a learner like that, maybe I don't want to call him introvert, but that's typically associated with the introvert kind of learner. Uh, they're not going to be comfortable if they don't understand grammar. For me, I was just happy talking. I had this deep-seated desire to talk to people. And um, for me, I was quite comfortable with not really understanding grammar. And I was also comfortable with making mistakes, which is something we're going to talk about later. So what works for you won't work for someone else. When you talk to other people about how they learn Polish, I want you to ask yourself a question. What kind of learner am I? Now, guys, no one teaches us in school nor in university how to learn. We either learn well and effectively or not. So, Vanata, the fact that you're in Polish is probably not the only one reason why you haven't learned Polish so far. My daughter is knocking on the door. Um, I'll just write to the wife. Just stands Paul Canyon Nazri. What am I saying? Okay, so. What works for you? Okay, so in my case, I was perfectly comfortable with not learning grammar. I just wanted to speak, but that had some negative side effects. For someone who's, say, more introvert, more process-oriented, you're going to be focusing on whether you've got the grammar right. What is the effect of this? Well, somebody who's more process-orientated is going to probably be a little bit more hesitant to speak publicly. And this is a major reason why some people don't make progress. It's a massive stumbling block. Uh, Vonata has written here, I would say 10 to hour, 20 hours a week on average, two times 19 minute lessons, homework, watching TV, reading books, trying and failing, speak to people. Vonata, sounds like you're in a good place, my friend. Keep, keep reacting to what I'm saying today and let's see whether we can help you to become a better Polish language learner. Vonata, my question to you and question to all the viewers right now is what kind of learner are you? Don't try and be a different learner. So don't try and learn like me. Try and learn like, um, which is going to be best placed for your learning style. If you're an introvert and you're process orientated, then some of the things I've done may be less relevant. Um, right. Take each day as it comes, task by task. T tip number five. I've got them written down here, as you can see. So guys, uh, Vanata, again, maybe one of the reasons why you're not learning Polish is that you're dumping this pressure on yourself, which is you feel like, hey, I'm working really hard and I'm not making progress. I've got some tips today which are going to help you that, but I really encourage you to have a mindset of, I'm only here to do what I've got to do this week. And what I've got to do this week is force myself to read a, um, a, an article about any subject that I like, uh, have one class with a teacher, do some homework and try and force myself to talk in a public situation. That's four massive achievements. 
But that's all I've got to do this week. I'm not going to think about whether I made it last week or whether I I'm, I will do it next week. Um, uh, so uh, that's really important. Hey, Paddy, my opinion, if you learn the grammar rules and you can throw me any new vocabulary and I can put it into a sentence properly, thanks for the shout out. Paul, great comment. Of course, grammar is important. It's not that I learned grammar, but I was super, super, super focused on just saying anything I could try and get meaning across without worrying whether I was saying it grammatically properly. So it's a little bit like if you learn to swim a certain way, it's rather hard for you to unlearn it. This caused me problems later. Guys, I'm now going to admit to you something which is quite embarrassing. At the start of learning Polish, I decided that I would just deliberately mishmash the endings of the words so that people didn't really know if I was saying uh, or, or something like that. And of course, now it's quite hard for me sometimes with endings. But I can tell you now, I think I raced ahead because I was just moving fast without thinking about the grammar endings. Um, I'm going to show you now one of the things I did. Paul, this is a top tip. Uh, this is my learning Polish language book from God knows when. And here I had the um, here I had different grammar tables that I was creating. Let's see. I want to even see if it's the year. Oh, man, this is one messed up book. Along with words that I was learning. Uh, Vanata, I find polls force you to focus on grammar by visibly wincing at mistakes. <laughs> uh, the way to correct me to Dva uh, And all my friends laughed, sucked. Vonata, I'm going to talk now. I'm going out of, I'm um, going off like my own um, subjects here. But here's something that's really important. And Vonata, I'm super glad that you're on this live, that you've been able to join me because um, I'm going to see if I can put, oh no, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I, I accidentally put Vanata in timeout. Uh, sorry, Vanata, I apologize. <laughs> oh, God, man, I just timed him out. Uh, I was trying to show his comment on screen. Uh, Vanata, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, dude. I apologize about that. Oops. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to touch the settings anymore. Uh, so Vanata talked about the way people react. And yeah, people will correct you. People will laugh at you. People will find you hilarious. People will literally giggle at every sentence you say. And this was true, I'd say, probably for the first few years of learning Polish. If you see this as something um, that's awkward and embarrassing, you're going to basically be discouraged uh, to speak Polish. So again, this comes back to mindset. This is the first thing that I said about the start. You need to be comfortable with looking like a complete and utter idiot. In fact, guys, you need to like it. You need to want to look like an idiot. You need to want people to laugh at you and, and you need to enjoy the sensation of feeling like a total prat, a total wally, because things that you knew, you should have known, you forgot, and then the person corrects you and you're in a public place and you can see that other people are laughing at you or you're in a shop. And I remember this vigorously, this moment when uh, I'm in a shop, I'm trying to order a chocolate bar and I can't pronounce it, vu, vu. I can't pronounce it. And I'm saying, you know, and I've got five people behind me and, and it's just, ugh, y'all, ugh. you need to love and gorge on those moments. Why? Because there's no process of learning which goes well. In fact, there's no process of learning which doesn't have mistakes in. Mistakes, errors, um, going two steps backwards sometimes are natural elements of moving forward. Learning a language is one of the most complex things a human brain can do. You will literally feel uh, how amazing your brain functions after going through this process. My memory, recall, things like that have improved dramatically. It's the single biggest intellectual achievement of my life. But if you think about it, you don't learn to swim. You don't learn to drive a car. You don't ever get an exam 100%. There's no such thing as succeeding first off. But we heap so much pressure on ourselves because of all those awkward social moments, whether we're with um, someone we like, someone we care about, whether we're in work. And guys, believe you me, I have gone through the full gamut. I worked in a media agency and I had to pitch to clients and I couldn't formulate complex ideas that would directly relate to us selling a massive project, you know, hundreds of thousands of Zwati. And I can feel that my boss, who's hired me to do a good job, is sitting there looking awkward and the clients, and I'm struggling over words, or it's a, a pitch and someone puts their hand up and says, I don't understand. People have laughed in my face, all of those different things. Um, I've loved it. And you know what? One of the reasons why uh, I've got to where I have and all the things I listed at the start of this video is because I've realized that all of those times are ding, not steps backwards, they're steps forward. 
every single time that you're in that situation, you're pushing yourself further forward. So let's think about the exact opposite. If you're the kind of person who looks to avoid mistakes, you're ashamed of mistakes, you're embarrassed looking stupid in front of other people, um, you have some form of ego problem or self-esteem issue, which means that you don't want to look stupid in front of other people, what will you do? You'll avoid making those mistakes. You'll avoid putting yourself in those situations. You'll avoid putting yourself forward. They ask you to come and do an interview. They ask you to come and do a speech. They ask you to come and do a pitch. You want to try and try something new. And your reaction will be, I'm not going to do this to avoid this difficult situation because I don't want to look stupid. So guys, I've explained a little bit more about mindset. I've hopped from topic to topic, but we've got some really nice um, comments here. I've had an interesting comment from Organic Organist. What a good work opportunity in Polish for an English speaker who knows Polish decently. I'm not going to answer that question because it's not specifically related to learning Polish. But Organic Organist has also said, making mistakes teach you humility. Um, most of the time it's easy to laugh it off, but sometimes I can't force myself and shut in. Organic Organist, I encourage you to want and love mistakes. And here's my next tip, my guys. When someone corrects you with your Polish, don't say sorry. Acknowledge the feeling that you feel stupid and force yourself to say thank you and force yourself to be grateful for the mistake. Because every time you make a mistake, you're not stepping backwards, you're stepping forward. This one mindset change is unbelievable in my opinion. And of course, you can also treat this um, with you know, any language. These are all universal principles. Um, Vonatar, if you're back, my friend, I super apologize for kicking you out. All right. Uh, that was just a massive mistake because I don't know how to use YouTube live chat. Guys, you're still with me. I super, super appreciate it. Can you write, please? Have you found these tips useful so far? Do you agree with what I've said? Have you got further comments? I'm happy, happy to speak to you. Um, next tip, and Vonatar, this might be useful for you. Record yourself regularly. So everyone's got a phone. This didn't exist 10 years ago or at least this version of the iPhone had an iPhone 4 10 years ago, guys. Garrett Jeffrey says good tips so far. So uh, as often as you can, if you can record yourself speaking Polish, six months later, regardless of how much effort you put in, let's just say it's one hour a week, um, you will listen to yourself again and it will be tinglingly embarrassing to listen to. You'll listen to yourself and go, oh my God, that's terrible. Whether it's an exercise, whether it's just reading out in a book, whether it's just saying anything, frankly, the words that you know, when you record yourself, you're able to do something which doesn't work in your memory. Because in your memory, you don't see the progress that you've made. When you record yourself and you listen back, you go, boom, holy SH1T. I spoke such bad Polish. I went back in my diary, guys, and I looked at the way that I was spelling Polish phonetically as far as I knew it. And it was horrific. The mistakes were just so embarrassing. You could see that I had no idea. And I love it because, of course, that means that you're learning. Um, so, guys, think about the mentality. I come back to this. So every week, every couple of months, record yourself. Record the words. And since I talked about recording, one of the most simple things that you can do right now, this book is almost its falling apart so horrifically that I'm almost it's like a sacred object for me. Uh, let's go into this one. Ah, yeah. So you see here, every time you find a new word, because you're a detective, you write down that new word. I've got books and books of new words. And I'm, it's amazing. Zastanaviac, consider. Ah, how don't you know that? One of the great things about um, language learning and learning any new skill is, guys, that as you move from consciously incompetent to consciously competent and then unconscious competence, which is where you're not even thinking about it, the things that you've learned seem to be so obvious and ridiculously easy that you're surprised that you didn't know it. So, guys... Um, recording yourself is a principle in every single area. I'm going to talk to you now about something which I think is really important, which is having a Polish language tracker. I'm so scared to um, I'm so scared to do anything in this live that I'm not going to share my screen with you because I don't know any of the settings. I'm doing this inside YouTube. So what I did is uh, have a learning Polish tracker. So what I did was I measured every single one of the classes that I was doing and what the subject was uh, was and who it was with. So. I can even find it. Maybe I can even print it out. I don't want to show you guys. Uh, I don't want to print it off. So my learning Polish tracker says um, what year I had the language class in, what the subject was, what the uh, who the teacher was. And why is this important? Well, number one, it's also a very useful way of measuring how far you've come because the subjects that you learned two years ago will seem banally obvious to you now. Number two, it's a little bit like a medical, um, it's a little bit like a medical 
uh, set of records. So as you move from one medical service provider to another, you have a whole bunch of medical records. And when I had Enelmed and moved to Luxmed, well, they didn't have my medical records. So those doctors didn't know anything about the treatment I had at Enelmed. And the reason why having a learning Polish tracker is useful is I encourage you to swap teachers. So we already talked about how important it is to have two times 90 minute classes minimum each week regularly without great big pauses. Uh, it's a huge forcing mechanism. So if you change teachers regularly, just like in boxing, you're going to learn a different style. Each boxing trainer has some pluses and some minuses. If you think about learning Polish um, like um, boxing, um, then think about this. You don't learn to box with just one person. You spar and train with loads of different people, fat guys, thin guys, girls, tall guys, skinny guys. Each one of them has different reach. Each one of them has a different style. And I remember thinking about sparring and thinking about learning Polish. And I deliberately changed my teacher every six to 12 months. And each one of them was good at one or, or different thing. Every time you go to a new teacher, you bring your learning Polish tracker with you and you can explain to them and they just know immediately exactly what level you're at. So it's huge. Hugely uh, important. Vonata, I'm super sorry, dude. I accidentally muted you from this conversation. Let's see what comments we've got. Garrett, I used to carry a small pocket dictionary with me. And when I looked up a word, I would highlight it. So I knew that going forward, I should remember that word. Garrett, great idea. And again, find the style that works for you. I would tell you one thing that I did, guys. Fishki. Um, so every time I learned a new Polish word, I would write it down on a little piece of paper. And then the English word on the back. So let's say it's... Um, got a pen let's say it's uh puchacz puchacz i always i kind of got that word mr i'm not going to tell you what it means uh let, let's say it's puchacz okay which is which is knock so what i would do is have the polish word uh aha, i've had a little polish language challenge here i might do that in a second but i want to carry on with the subject uh, i look at the polish word and i try and remember what the word was and then I look over and I say, ah, oh, I didn't get it. And, and I literally had a huge pile of these fishki. And what I do is every time I was on a plane or on a bus or on a train, I'd take these out uh, and quickly check if I knew the word. No, it would go into the wrong pile. If I knew the word, it would go into the right pile. And I'd slowly end up with just the ones that I didn't know. And then I'd come back to them. So constantly testing myself the whole time. And on planes, this was kind of crazy. I'd take the um, the plain seat down that little thingamabob tray table as they call it and i'd have this big lump of fish key these little cards that are written out the word on one side and it were verbs you know all sorts of things nouns those kind of things and i'd literally just work through the pile again and again until i've flown from warsaw to london and people say what are you doing and of course what i was doing was eliminating the words i know because i don't need to learn them anymore and focusing on the words i didn't and after a while you would just naturally that pile would become smaller and smaller and smaller so whether you're like garrett and you have it in a dictionary, whether you're, you're using Fishkey or whether you just have a little book like I have as a Moleskin book. Um, learning words is a great way uh, to move forward. As you become more proficient, as you move from um, unconsciously incompetent to consciously incompetent to um, uh, consciously, uh, 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 wait, unconsciously com competent, you will essentially, these words will just be... Um, what language are you dreaming? Garrett, that's a great question. I have dreamt in Polish which is freaky. I tend to dream in Polish if I read Polish before I go to sleep. Um, and if I work in Polish, uh, I have, um, for example, I do webinars now about the psychology of child and child cognitive development, would you believe, which lasts for two, three hours. I did events for hundreds of parents um, this year and last year for four hours at one event talking about child psychology in Polish. And it would just dominate and swamp my mind to points where I'd actually want to step away from the language because it was kind of hurting my brain a bit i've had some great comments here guys so i'm going to take a little pause just to look at your comments um garrett maybe writing them down um would help exactly garrett i think there's something about the process of writing down i'm not a massive fan of apps i didn't learn polish in the app age i haven't got anything to say about things like Babel. um vonatar said i put new words in my fishki app but then i forget them a week or so later vonatar Again, we think about there's no process of learning which doesn't have failure in. So again, are you focused on how you're not learning because it's hard, uh, because you forgot a word that you should know? If you have this approach, you will inevitably be disappointed with yourself. If you celebrate disaster and failure and treat them as learning opportunities, then actually you'll become, you, you just naturally shortcut that process. Remember, learning takes place in, in an atmosphere of fun. 
If we're having fun, we're learning. If we become a detective and we fall in love with the, uh, we're just rolling those words around in our mouth, then we will enjoy the process. When we enjoy, we learn quicker. When we suffer, which is a very common 20th century thing, it's like, uh, I need to punish you so that you learn. We learn slower. It's just a simple fact. Okay, I've got some great questions here, guys. I'm going to answer them. I've got quite a lot more tips for you. I hope you're enjoying this because I can never normally do this in a... Um, uh, uh, in a in a shorter video, um, Vonatai. I've had two dreams in Polish, though I don't remember what happened. Just that it was in Polish. Yeah, Vonatai. Same thing. I don't remember what happened. I just a phrase, and I was like, when I woke up, oh, that was in Polish. Um, how do you improve in transitioning between speaking various languages? If I think and speak too long in English, make the same um, switch back to Polish is difficult. Organic organist dude, you're like my most favorite commenter right now, other than Vonatai. Why is that? Because I now raise my, I have two daughters and I raise them in English, but my conversations at work, a lot of my work, because I run a Polish language business, my colleagues and team members are in Polish. Uh, basically the rest of my life, my conversations, with my wife are in Polish. For my kids, it's automatic. They just flick between the languages, literally not even thinking about it. For them, they don't see the difference. And I truly believe this is because for thousands of years, it was quite common for people to have multiple languages. In fact, that's still pretty true of many different countries right now. It's not weird to be able to flick between languages. It's only weird if you're doing it for the first time. Now, why am I talking about this? One thing that I've noticed, which is really strange for me, which I still don't quite understand is when I come back from a two week break in the UK, let's say I've been on holiday, it's Christmas. I often find that my Polish is better, not worse. And I've tried to understand how this phenomenon can take place, because if you're removed from the area, it should be worse. Simultaneously, when I do a lot of stuff in Polish, there's some days, and this was worse back in the day, it's a little bit better now. There were some periods when I actually felt like my Polish was dreadful. I, again, I felt embarrassed and ashamed because I should know something and it wasn't quite working. I don't know whether it's our circadian rhythms, whether it's something to do with hormones, tiredness, the environment we're in, there's lots of different factors here that can help us. But I actually find that sometimes I speak better Polish after I come back from the UK. And sometimes my Polish um, is worse, even though I'm here and literally speaking all day in Polish. What I encourage you to do is to bend with the river. Okay, one day it's hard, another day it's easy. The question is not whether today you're finding it hard or easy. The question is, are you moving with the river? Are you moving forward? Are you taking one step forward, learning one new word, learning one new case, conquering a, a problem? I don't think Polish has anything to do with Russian, does it? Well, Rachel, I think there's grammar structure that's the same and some, some grammar cases are the same and some words have a similar-ish meaning, but many of the words have a different meaning. Um, Vonatai, you're right, Paddy. My Polish teacher says the same because I live in Poland and need to speak to natives all day. So my all experience of Polish is disappointing and negative. Need to change that. Vonatai, game changer, my friend. You move from finding difficulty and challenge annoying and shameful to enjoyable and actually welcome. The more comfortable you are with that, brilliant. Um, okay, let's have a look now. Do you think that you know Polish, you can understand Russian and Ukrainian? Grzegorz, yeah, I think I can understand bits of it. There's certain words that come forward. I actually learned Russian for one year when I was 13. Um, and going to the Czech Republic for me is just the funniest thing of all time. Because Czech people are like speaking Polish, but having taken some sort of mind altering drug is absolutely hilarious. So I love doing all of that stuff. Um, okay, let's have another look. Paul Webster, I have an Excel spreadsheet with formatting that tells me if I get the word right or not. A cover and learn approach. Typing the words helps me remember them better. This is exactly the subject we talked about, guys. Repetition is important. Guys, there's one thing we don't learn, certainly in my school, which was memorization. And memorization will help you because obviously you've got case endings, all sorts of you know new information to come in. Best tip I did, says Jess, was just start journaling in Polish as much as you can. Absolutely. Jess, we're going to talk about this in a second. Guys, we're talking about so many different subjects here, but I hope you don't regret us jumping from subject to subject because I wanted to go slowly and really talk about the subject for the first time. Um, so organic organics, coming back to your question, how do you improve in transitioning between speaking various languages? It can be clunky, but let me just tell you something. I was filming in English yesterday and when my mind was running at high speed, Polish words were coming out of my mouth. When I go home to the UK and I'm in the pub with my mates or speaking to my fr family, Polish uh, transition words like chili or bo or navet, uh, so sorry, navet, I just said that in Polish, uh, where, where you're pausing, mm, 
you say you say in English something like "like" has replaced that. It was one of the things that's changed in the English language that that I've missed. So I actually have problems now with remembering my English because I spend so much time engrossed and embedded in the Polish language. Uh, what is the funniest way to learn Polish? <laughs> that's an interesting question. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I'll come back to that in a second. Did you start off speaking English with your wife and move later to Polish? If so, how did you switch? My wife and I speak 80% English and around 20% Polish currently. Vonatar, absolutely superb question. So one of the things which I think is important is when I speak to Polish people, they go, wow, you must have had so much support from your girlfriend. I, I moved here to be with my girlfriend, Joanna. We split up and now I have my wife. Guys, neither Joanna nor my wife have helped me really in any way with learning Polish. I've actually learned Polish despite them. Because like most Polish people, their interest was in learning English and practicing their English. And both of them spoke great English. So with Joanna at the start, we just naturally spoke English because that was the language I knew. Um, and we I didn't know enough Polish to be able to communicate with her. Slowly, we started to put in um, Polish uh, words into our vocabulary, but it basically stayed an English language relationship. When I met my wife, we were living in Poland. I was trying a lot of Polish. Um, and I was able to have a lot more conversations with her. So here's a, a rule which I think is pretty fixed. The language that you start off speaking with your partner is probably the one that you're going to carry on using. And of course, what happens is when you're in a relationship with someone, you need to resolve problems. You need to express emotions. You sometimes need to be very careful about the words you're using. Anyone who's going out with a Polish woman will know exactly what I mean. And if you're trying to do this in a foreign language, it can be really difficult. You can, and I've done this myself, you can uh, unintentionally offend someone. You can not achieve the goal that you want. You can completely misconstrue what you're trying to say. I say things all the time which are actually really offensive. Here's a good example. Proszę uh, zrób So please, can you do that? Please do that. In English, it doesn't sound too offensive. I've been told, I can't remember which one of it it is. Apparently, it's super offensive. Conversely, my daughter, who's obviously learning English and Polish at the same time, says things in English that sound okay in Polish that are offensive in English, like, to, give me that. You need to say, you need to say, please, can I have in English? It's really, really important. Give me that is super aggressive and super rude in English, English. Um, so I've forgotten the uh, question uh, here, which I need to come back to, um, which is around language learning. So Vonatar, in your case, most you're mostly speaking English. Since you seem to be actually making a real effort, and I congratulate you for that, you're putting in lots of input, um, I would encourage you to start maybe moving those levels up. But here's the thing. Resolving problems in a marital relationship is really just the same kind of challenge as working in a Polish company or meeting someone for the first time. If you say to yourself, well, I, I want to get this right from the start and I want to be able to resolve a challenge with my wife, I want to be able to you know, argue with her effectively or convey my emotions effectively and I can't do it in Polish. If you take that attitude from the start, then inevitably you won't be doing it in a year's time, five years time. So ask yourself this question, am I ready to look like an idiot for the next five years? Am I ready to feel stupid? Am I ready to feel ashamed? Am I ready to feel embarrassed and irritated because I'm not able to convey emotions that I could so easily get across in my native language? If the answer is you're ready, then one day you'll look back and you say, well, I look like a fool, but now I can do it. One day people will go, whoa, you speak awesome Polish. Uh, I'm going to, proszę to zrobić is more like an order. So I don't know that. Please, can you do that? Proszę is please, yeah? So Disputant has written there how offensive that is. And uh, Disputant, that's exactly, I had no idea I was offending people. I was in work saying, and that's really offensive in Polish. So they say it's just, just out of context. Context is key. Um, are you learning Polish to an extent alongside your children as they study in school? Organic Organist. I'm hoping I'll finally master Polish when I raise a family in here. Organic Organist, dude, you've like got the most interesting questions. Uh, no is the answer. So uh, it's a common misconception that three-year-olds have basic language skills. Three-year-olds have enormous, they have thousands and thousands of words. Um, adult learners, if you're an adult learning for the first time, you just learn in a completely different way. So one of the things that I was lucky and blessed in was I was 27, not 57. It's just inexorably harder for a, for a middle-aged or um, 50, 60-year-old person to be able to learn a new language. Um, Michael Dembinski, who I highly recommend, runs a blog in Polish. He expressed it this way. As he's got older, I think he's 
approaching 60 or thereabouts. He learns more slowly, but what he learns stays more deeply with him. Whereas when you're a child, you're just this great big sponge. You don't need fishkey to remember words. They just come to you naturally. That's why teaching children language is such a pleasure compared to adults because they don't have hangovers. Uh, they aren't tired. They're not knackered. And they haven't got a whole bunch of other problems in their heads. They just love learning. When you're 20, 30, 40, your learning process is different. So I don't really learn Polish with my kids alongside them, but I, I immerse myself in Polish as a result. Maybe I don't need to. However, one thing I can show you, for example, organic organist is um, when we uh, watch, um, oh, we're going to talk about that in a second. When I read books, for example, we have a whole bunch of kids books, some of them in Polish, some of them in English. When I read Polish books to my kids, I automatically translate them into English. And that's interesting in of itself. So again, remember input equals output. If you're reading a book to your children, you can translate it back into um, uh, English. If you're watching Netflix, and it's in Polish, turn off the English language subtitles, push yourself forward all the time. Guys, I cannot emphasize this enough. I called it total war. From morning to evening, put as much Polish into your mind as you can. For Jess, it's um, journaling. She's living in the UK. For Vonatar, it could be increasing the amount of words that you have um, uh, that you're using with your, or the amount of conversations you have with your Pol in Polish. I'm going to give you one more tip, guys, um, around immersing yourself. I was working at the, Brit the, the British Embassy in Warsaw. Most of the employees were uh, Polish. So actually the day-to-day -day conversations were in Polish, but obviously the official language was in English. It was the absolute ideal place for me to learn because I was um, I was uh, basically in a Polish language environment, but I could still work in English. And I did one thing which I think was really important. On Fridays, I had Tilko Popolsku days. So these were days where I would only try and speak to Polish. Everybody knew about it. I printed off a little badge and I walked around. And I can tell you guys, we had so many work conversations where I was standing there going, um, uh, uh, this Vishli email uh, to... Uh, sosh tam, sosh tam, and, and literally not getting it across and the other people around me were so patient waiting for me to try and finish the sentence not interrupting not telling me what I was trying to say and I was blessed by that I was also blessed because they gave me um, Polish language classes for free as part of my um, as part of professional development which was super super helpful guys I'm going to have a look more at your comments because we're getting loads of things uh, here we had a great question from Organic Organist Garrett I just moved to Poland last week what are some good habits to develop now so Garrett straight away start classes individual classes like I said at the start of this video straight away try um, amassing a vocabulary straight away get on to buying a book straight away resign from all of those habits which are going to keep you in your your native language I'm assuming you're English or you've come from an English language country you will naturally want to make friends with people that's a natural human habit. If you do that with English language people, you're going to have less contact with Polish. Uh, guys, I'm jumping with so many different subjects here, but I want you to also know that um, I deliberately didn't meet and make any friends with English language speaking people. I stayed away from expat pubs, expat meetings, expat meetups. Um, I didn't have, it was Facebook and all those things didn't really exist. So it was kind of, it was a lonely year, especially the first year. Making friends in Poland, in Polish, when you barely speak the language is also really, really difficult. I, I was part of a, this music group. We were touring around the country in 2011, 2012, and they were speaking rapid fire slang, 20 year olds basically speaking Polish. And I'm sitting there on the train with them going to, the, and, I, and I don't understand a word. And I felt lonely and sad and, and it was awkward and painful and horrible. And I didn't appreciate how amazing and fantastic it was at the same time because I learned slang words from them that most Polish people didn't even know. And again, it's all part of this mindset thing, guys, which is putting yourself in the awkward position. So Garrett, more than anything else, immerse, immerse, immerse and stay away from people and habits that are going to keep you away from doing that. We're getting some amazing questions, guys. I'm really super grateful for um, all of your input. I'm going to carry on going. This I want this to be the longest, most in-depth session that I can have, get all of the ideas that I have across learning Polish. Um, Jessica, I aim to be speaking fluently in Polish when I will become your age. Jess, this is actually one thing I didn't talk about, which I'd like to at the start, which is have a, have a goal. Absolutely. I've said ignore the mountain, but at the same time, think about where you need to be. For Jess right now, living in the UK with a Polish boyfriend, one of my dear friends, Maliki Vyashkiewicz, 
learning just enough to be able to hold a basic conversation with Marek's parents would be boom, awesome. Learning just enough to be able to buy something in a shop when she comes to Polish, boom, awesome. If she is seriously thinking about moving to Poland, Jess, we invite you to come and live in Warsaw, my friend, um, then clearly to work professionally, you will need to speak a higher level of Polish. Maybe I'd like to talk about this in a second. We've had a few questions about how to survive in Poland. Um, times have changed since I moved to Poland, but one of the reasons why I was so deeply obsessed and fascinated and immersed myself so hard was I was very aware right from the start that this is no country for English language speakers. Times have changed. It's easier now because of the internet, because of marketing and Polish companies going global. It is easier now to live on the surface, Gładko, um, jak się and and basically not be in Poland. I just think that's such a tragedy, guys. I had a conversation once with a lady, we were in Lidl, and she had a whole bunch of chocolates and chocolate yogurts and things like that. And I don't know why, uh, <laughs> I can't because I'm that kind of person. I said to her, I see that you've got a lot of chocolates. And she turned around to me, and I don't know whether she thought I was a foreigner or not. She said to me, yeah, the reason why I buy lots of chocolates is that when I was a child, I couldn't get any. So now I live in a free Poland, I buy them whenever I want. And it hit me, I was so profound, I was like, F flipping hell try not to swear. I had, I come from such a different culture and experience. I had no idea that this is a mindset. This is an approach to life that so many Polish people must have that their childhood, they were so denuded and denied things that they could buy more of the sweets and chocolates that they want now. And I never would have been able to have that experience and a million other experiences like interviewing the Polish prime minister, meeting former Povstanca Warszawskie, so people who fought in the Warsaw Uprising, and being able to talk to them about the weapons and the conditions that we were in in Polish and all the other amazing little micro moments that make up those moments of gratitude where you think, I am so grateful for learning Polish for my own intellectual purposes. I'm a better person as a result of it. And I feel like I know this country. But I do also want to warn you guys, which is learning Polish is not the only way to learn Poland. There's places I haven't been in Poland. There's a zillion books I haven't read that I want to. Just because you learn enough Polish to be able to buy stuff in a shop, order something in a restaurant, doesn't mean you know Poland. In fact, Christian Davies, the son of Norman Davies, who doesn't speak as good Polish as I do, um, actually, I think knows Poland better because he's Norman Davies' he's son, obviously. But he's, he's, um, he's actually just just understands the country better. He has his own point of view. I don't necessarily agree with everything he says. Um, but uh, this is one thing which I think is important. Just knowing Polish isn't enough to know Poland. Okay, I'm going to have another look at some more uh, tips. Jess, Netflix tip. True, I was watching Shrek 3 in Polish and I learned Tende Panowie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jess, this is what I love. You know, for me, Oczywiście. I just said that word over and over again for about a year. Then I replaced it with something else. M remember, guys, learning each Polish word is like drinking a fine wine. Roll it around in your mouth. Enjoy the sheer sensation of saying it. And after a while, move on to tasting something else. Camille Vu. Just immerse yourself in a language as much as you can. Absolutely, Camille. Couldn't agree more. Vonatar. Yeah, I know what you mean by loneliness, Paddy. Increasingly feel like giving up and returning to the UK. Vonatar, I totally understand you, dude. And I don't want to say, don't do it. It's not the right thing. Um, there were many times when I thought about it. But I'm so, so glad I didn't for lots of different reasons. And when you leave in a different country, you go, you know, you don't know what your life would look like. I have no idea where I'd be now. But I know I'm in the right place for me as a person. Um, Vonatar, dude, you sound like you're doing so many different things right that if you focus on your mindset, you will make big, big uh, improvement. And Organic Organist, one good trick in learning languages is reading your favorite books, which you know well in the new language. Boom, dude, super tip, guys. And here's one thing I want to talk about. So many of us, when we get to a certain level, let's say intermediate, think we need to be learning Shinkiewicz or Charles Dickens. When I see people reading those books on the bus, or they used to anyway before the phone, I'd be like, oh man, don't do that. Read the subject you're interested in. I didn't read enough Polish um, when I was learning the subject, and I only later appreciated just how amazing reading can be to force you to learn new words. Um, and I deliberately started reading books by basically like geezer books. So books about crime like uh, Massa, Massa, um, uh, Pinions of Mafia, I can't quite remember what it was called. 
uh, Ivan about footballers in the 80s where they get drunk and get hammered and have fights with militia and these kind of things. Uh, not because they were technically challenging, but just because it was easier. So sometimes bending with the river means that you need to um, go as quickly as possible. Michal, do you write in Polish? Yes, I do. Um, writing is the last skill, in my opinion, that you will acquire in your learning. It's also the last thing that teachers seem to focus on. I make uh, an F ton of mistakes in writing Polish, but I've also written pitches for clients, um, quite long amounts of text. I'm writing a conspect for a book right now, biographies of myself quite a lot. So it's the same process. You start off making a zillion mistakes and then slowly, slowly get things get better. I don't think I'll ever probably achieve um, a mastery of, of Polish to the point where I'll be able to write without any mistakes. But I will um, say one thing, guys, like just health warning. I don't consider myself an amazing Polish speaker. I've learned to a certain level. I've appeared on national television. I constantly wait. And this is the imposter theory. This is the imposter feeding of someone saying like, dude, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> but nobody ever seems to say that. So I just carry on. Um, let's have a look more at some of the um commentators do you encourage using a polish translator when conversing with polish people shanice i encourage you to use your brain and your neurons and firing up new new neurosynapses by just trying and remembering to look like a, an idiot uh looking like an idiot means that you're making progress love it um martin uh i've been leaving living in the uk and when we travel around europe i see german polish english etc especially when we talk about accents. Okay, guys, you've got questions for me. Feel free to go ahead. I'm going to um, carry on because I've got some other things. Um, where am I? I've talked about, um, maybe I'm going to recap my top tips. Number one, um, think about your mindset. Are you telling yourself it's hard or are you telling yourself it's easy? Um, feel comfortable with feeling stupid. It means you're making progress. Uh, and also Polish is not the hardest language in the world. Forget about that crap. It's a lie. It's I'm not going to say what it is, but you know what it is. Number two, learn individually. Don't learn in groups. Don't learn in classes. I don't recommend learning online with apps. Learn with a person. That's how for thousands of years we've learned with people. They are useful tools, but they are not the main way. Learn with one teacher. Swap your teacher over after a few months. Number three, e input equals output. If you're learning one hour a week, you'll get one hour out. If you're learning like Vonatar, 10 to 20 hours a week, dude, I'm, I'm sure you're better at your Polish than you think you are. And I think in your case, it's probably a mindset issue. Step number four, understand your learning style. What works for me doesn't work for Paul Webster. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you understand how you learn most effectively, you can use that knowledge to learn more quickly. Oh, step six, step five, sorry. Take each day as it comes, task by task. Don't look at the mountain. Just take one step ahead. This is something you talk about in the military. Um, to achieve a massive goal, just make one step forward. Keep focusing on that one step forward. Um, day six, a uh, tip, tip, tip six. Don't compare yourself to anyone other than yourself. Guys, comparing yourself to other learners who may have started the class with you or come from the same country is one of the most pointless things you can do because all of us have more or less aptitude. Some of us, uh, for example, Paul, I'm sure will one day better speak Polish grammar than I will. Uh, Paul, I know you. That's why I'm talking about you because you have this methodical, careful, quite sensible approach. Whereas I just, just went forward and just said whatever. Um, each one of us has things that we're good at and things that we're bad at. The challenge is not to be as good as the best student in the class or the person that we know or Patrick Ney or someone we've seen on TV. The challenge is always only to be the best version of ourselves. So comparing ourselves to um, someone else is completely uh, irrelevant. Uh, I'm going to carry on. We've got some awesome questions here, guys. Keep asking questions and, and do set your top tips in as well. Uh, mm, tip number seven, record yourself regularly, record yourself speaking, record yourself writing, look back regularly. Um, as a part of that, I'd also say um, keep regular notes of what works for you. So inside your learning Polish tracker that we've talked about, say what went wrong, what, what went right. Um, for example, I went to this group class and after every class, we'd end up getting drunk. So what kind of memory record do you have after you've gone out and got hammered on with vodka with the other students? Stupid. So switching to individual classes meant that I avoided that problem. Step, uh, tip number eight, don't apologize for making mistakes. Instead of saying, sorry, say, thank you. Say thank you. Every single time, uh, someone corrects you. Uh, step number nine, be a boxer, spar with different people train with different people, train with different teachers, train with different um, uh, uh, Polish people. 
Step tip number 10, record the number of hours you put in to master something. People say you need 10,000 hours. If your input is one hour a week, how long will that take you? Uh, oh, tip number 11. I didn't even talk about this. Test yourself regularly. I avoided tests because like most people, I avoid discomfort and I want to have an easy life. If you test yourself at A1, A2, B1, B2, um, C1, C2, the sheer act of going through the test will push you forward and and make you move towards the test the test will be useful for lots of different reasons like if you want to get a job in poland if you want to become a polish citizen if you want to um you know integrate yourself further you want to prove that you can speak the polish language get your carta uh, bobito or maybe you know all these different things you're going to need the test but the test will also force you to mo move more quickly so i would definitely recommend uh, that and for example if you start with a new teacher you should set, for example, your target with your teacher. Jess, this is something we were talking about, which is um, your target with your teacher should be, I want to move from A1 to A2 with you in one year. And your task as a teacher is to get me there. And guys, um, there are language schools which make learning Polish easy that set exams for you that are easy. Go for the hardest possible exams. I'm not going to name the school, but I went at the start in Warsaw to one school which I don't recommend, where they obviously decided, let's make the language as easy as possible because people will spend more money with us if they find it an easy experience. Learning any language, Spanish, Russian, Chinese, is just prima facie at first point. It's just a tough job, okay? You're talking about 100,000 plus words, new grammar structures, pronunciation. Pronunciation, we've just had a comment here from Disputant. That's just the start. It's not even a hard thing. I'm not saying, by the way, because I have accent problems and tongues, etc. Um, uh, I'm not saying that, uh, it's, it's not difficult, but it's just one of many different things that you have to learn. Itila. Um, number, tip number 12, set tilko poposko days. So days when you only speak Polish, force yourself to speak Polish like Vonatar with your partner or your colleagues at work. Um, and yes, if you're working in the English language environment in Poland, it's going to be harder for you, but do that. You'll look stupid. You'll feel uncomfortable, but you already know from tip number one, that's actually something you should celebrate. Uh, tip 13, I've said record yourself, so probably I've already said that. Tip 14 is fishki or just loving and enjoying the sheer learning process of accumulating words. Tip number 15 is don't rely on your partner. They probably uh, won't be able to help you. And here's another thing. Don't rely on learning Polish from people who don't understand grammar. So anyone who's taught English knows that there's this horrible moment where the um, where the learner will say, but why? And you go, it just is, okay? I can't explain it to you. The reason why you can't explain is because you haven't done you, your language as a philo philology subject at university. A teacher would have become, would have studied the Polish language for three or five years. I can't remember. If they have a master's in Polish, they will know why. They will be able to explain it to you. The number of occasions where the teacher will go, oh, it just is, all right, will be dramatically low. Whereas when you get some kind of hungover uh, English language teacher who hasn't even got a TEFL or, or the other one, he'll just go, it just is. You don't, uh, you won't be able to learn if you just have this approach of just, it just is, although that is an important part of mindset. You need grammar like Leonardo DiCaprio needs a life belt in the Titanic right at the end or just another box. Actually, Leonardo DiCaprio should have just got onto the box with Kate Winslet, but we all know about that. Grammar is going to be your way of putting a mesh and putting a structure around the language which enables you to fill it with words. So um, I've already shown you guys little tip boxes that I had for verbs and verb endings and cases and all that kind of stuff. I had them printed out and at the front of these little books. And I literally stop the conversation and go, wait a second, and <laughs> try and look for that. Um, Paul Webster has an Excel spreadsheet. Of course he does. Um, find the way that works for you. If it works effectively, then it's the right way. Um, you will not learn Polish with people who are native speakers who can't explain to you how grammar works. You need to have a teacher and you need to have someone who understands philology. Um, step number 16, definitely around books uh, and making sure that you're learning from a book. So again, if you're trying to teach yourself, you will go more slowly than if you're working with a boxing instructor who's got the best equipment, who trains you twice a week, where you train with other partners. I think there's lots of different take crossover from other branches. Guys, I haven't touched on quite a huge bunch of other things that I wanted to talk about today. So I'm going to have a look at uh, uh, I'm going to have a look at um, some of the different comments that you've got here. Uh, 
Vonatar talks about how you naturally pick up on mistakes and how things become so obvious after a while. Vonatar, I think this is a great thing. This is there's a there's a way of expressing when you learn a new skill. When you don't know anything, like most Polish languages for the first time, you are unconsciously incompetent. You don't know what you don't know. As you start to go through the process, you become consciously incompetent. In other words, you start to realize, whoa, this is so much to learn. I I, I can't do this. As you start to become more confident, as you start to push yourself through, you become consciously competent. You'll need to work hard at it, but you'll be doing a good job. There's the fourth level, which Vonatar, you're at, my friend. So let's let's praise where you've got right now, which is where you're unconsciously competent. You're not even thinking about it. And that's where you are when you're a native speaker. I'm un I'm unconsciously competent in speaking. I'm not, I don't even think about, I have no idea what Polish grammar is. I've completely forgotten everything that I've learned. Um, and that's the moment where you're not even thinking about what you're saying when you know that you've reached that level. Um, and that's one of the reasons why people say, oh, you speak such great Polish to me, or even a couple of amazing things. I had this last week. I had a hypnotherapy class last week, guys. And after a little while, the lady said, um, I don't know. Uh, she, she was kind of doing the hypnotherapy in Polish, but adding in this English stuff. And I said to her, you don't need to, you don't need to add in this English things in Polish. And she said, oh, I just don't know which language you learned first. Was it English or how much Polish they spoke at home? And I was like, no, no Polish. I, I, I wasn't, I don't have Polish parents or anything like that. And she went, what? Uh, and, I, and I said, yeah, I, 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 came, I came to Poland. I learned Poland when I came here. And she said, well, how old were you? And I said, 27. She goes, whoa. <laughs> you can imagine how good it was for my ego at that particular point. When people mistake you for um, an, a, like a Polish person who left when they were a child and went to the UK. I love that moment. It's like, yes, it's a sign you've reached consciously uh, un competent, uh, unconsciously competent because you're already able to express yourself without pausing and hesitating. It will take several years, but it's absolutely doable. I don't want you to feel like watching this that it's going to take 10 years because I've, I've basically stayed where I am. I've been treading water in my Polish language class for quite some time. All right, I'm going to have a look more at uh, your comments. Um, Greg, what is your opinion on Polish people being relatively reserved towards other people on the streets? Greg, I'm going to park that question because it's not about the subject of learning Polish. But one thing I definitely want to say, though, Greg, is there's this common perception that Polish people are rude. I've got to tell you, I go around the streets where I am now and we have so much banter with different Polish people, people, strangers, grannies, ladies. I think learning Polish is one of the ways that you can actually start to understand that. No, they're not rude. They may stare and have less smiling. But the minute you speak to them in their language, completely different exp experience. And when they are um, maybe not so keen on talking to you or a little bit reserved, etc., it could just be because you don't have the tool to be able to communicate with them and do the icebreakers that you would as a native speaker. Because there's plenty of people like that in the UK when I go around. I'm like, oh, I always remember the UK as being such a friendly place. Actually, there's, there's lots of grumpy people as well. But when you speak the same language, you know that one word is going to change that completely. And that's what you can do in Polish. So I kind of answered your question. Michael Michal says, yeah, change your teachers. Absolutely agree change your teachers each year uh organic organist do you consider your ear trained well enough to hear proper grammar yeah i i notice mistakes and from time to time i hear a polish person make a mistake but i'm usually thinking to myself is that a mistake again don't rely on native speakers as the sole source of um your polish learning and this is one other thing i didn't even talk about guys don't learn polish with other foreigners so if you think about a group of 10 if you're only going as slow as the slowest person, that can be annoying for you because you're wasting your money, waiting for someone else to learn something you already know. But what if you were the fastest, i.e. the most effective Polish speaker in the class? Well, you're then learning Polish with nine other people who are worse than you. So what's the drag effect on your Polish learning? It's obviously high. Whereas if you're with a bunch of Polish native speakers, it's obviously much, uh, uh, you're going to learn Polish more effectively. But Bearing in mind, guys, Polish is pretty hard and quite a lot of Polish people, again, don't really know what they're saying and make lots of mistakes. All right. Polish is not harder, says Disputant, but learning when to use and how to speak je, ze, je, te, she, en, o, u, en, en is quite hard even for young Poles. I, I disagree, Disputant. It's just the first rung on an immensely long ladder. Um Renata Mucha, I speak daily in Polish to my husband, but he never corrects me, so I'm not aware when I speak grammatically incorrect. Okay, Renata, uh, yeah, you need to ask your partner to correct you. This irritates the hell out of me when my wife doesn't correct me. And I'll say something and I'll go, that was wrong. Correct me. Please correct me. I'm like begging for it. Um, Paul Webster, how many years did you take and pass the B12 and B2 exams? So, Paul, I um, only passed the B2 exam. I've got it right here in front of me. 
Uh, because I was planning on sorting out my Polish citizenship today. Uh, guys, I want to find it. Nope, that's my Act Urodzenia. I'll just get it here. One of the happiest days of my life. Um, 2014. So I was only learning Polish for about two or three years. This is a common question, guys, which I'm embarrassed to answer now. I was only learning Polish for um, three or four years with teachers. The rest of the time, it's just been book reading, podcasts, conversations, watching TV, reading magazines, reading newspapers, and remembering, for example, guys, I didn't read Rzecz um, Pospolita. I read Fact. Fact. I can't remember. A fact. Stupid, like, the stupid newspaper with really simple Polish in. Start easy, work harder. So, Paul, I lived in Poland for four years, and then I took the B2 exam. You're right, Paddy. You know my Polish isn't so bad when I write to you on Instagram. Vonata, I'm not sure who you are, my friend, so I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Kim, yes, them. Kim, yes, them. Your lecture is very useful not only with Polish, but with other languages as well. Thank you very much. So inspiring. Also, thank you very much. Uh, Fanny forever. How do you manage with the verbs? Uh, Fanny, I you know it's one of the biggest, you're talking about cases. Um, I probably still make loads of mistakes today, but I love mistakes. I embrace them. I cuddle them. I want to crush them up against my mm, 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 more 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 question is not are you making mistakes but are you making progress i think i've talked about that enough today um uh so here we are let's keep going um let's keep going there's some or oh, paul says there are some awesome channels on youtube that explain the grammar really clearly paul thank you so much dude this didn't exist when i was learning polish and the cases 10 years ago and clearly there's a lot of resources out there that I don't even know about. So Paul, maybe you can write in the, in the chat right now and pub so we can have this published so that people can go to those channels and just give them the name. That would be super awesome. Uh, Vonata, my problem, my pronunciation problem now is the difference between C in uh, yeah, Vonata, I, you know, again, I'm not sure you've got a problem. You just have a challenge and it's a thing that's affecting you right now. And in two years time, it'll probably be another challenge and another problem. Um, I'm going to keep going. I use my knowledge of Latin to understand the grammar. It's such a massive help. Vonata, exactly. I learned Latin for four years at school. Never thought it would be useful. And I think it may well have played a small part in me understanding later on the cases. That said, I remember when we first learned about cases, maybe 10 years later, and I was completely bowled over when I was 24. Okay. Okay. Uh, in Polish, there are some phonetic constructs that used to sound different, but now they sound exactly the same, but we write them different. Yeah, Michal, there are, but mostly Polish is phonetic, and that's a massive game changer compared to um, compared to English. Uh, fr mm. Vonata, a friend who speaks B2 Russian, says he finds learning slow Slavic languages is a case of long plateaus and short improvements. Polish is the same for me. I'm stuck at B1 for ages now. How long should you be learning B1 for? Six months? A year? A year and a half? I'd say about a year for each of the A1, A2, B1, B2. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. When I think about it, it took me four years to get from moving to Poland to passing the exam with a pretty high score in B2. So that was four years. And in the last six years, I've got to the point where I'm doing all those things I've talked about, like memorizing a four-hour presentation but it's like i can think about it i cannot believe i got that far um but i also had the target which was learning polish in one year that was the target i set me it was completely unrealistic so let's just say as a rule of thumb one year per um per level um Vonata, i went to a conversation group everyone was ukrainian except me i never went back as it didn't help my polish exactly if you're learning with ukrainian people then you're going to learn ukrainian polish you want to learn polish polish I would not recommend learning with other foreigners, uh, frankly speaking, and there's no offense to them. Um, but I don't want to waste my money waiting for a Chinese person to, speak, to pronounce R when I want to be making a mistake that's more relevant to me. Camille Vu, I'd like to mention one thing which is very noticeable. We Polish people, we need English input as we've never been exposed to English language before. Camille, na papierze mój drogi, polecę dobrze radzę sobie z językiem angielskim. Okay, it's definitely doable. So, uh, uh, 
Vonatar, wow, I've lived in Poland three years and I would no way take the B1 exam yet scares the hell out of me. Vonatar, exactly, dude, we keep coming back to this, which is if we find exams scary, we will naturally not want to do them. Human beings avoid pain and they look for pleasure. Speaking in your native language is pleasure-seeking activity. L doing the B1 exam, even though you know it's going to be tough, is a pain-seeking activity. Look for things that are difficult because that's how you make progress. It's not meant to be easy. And if you rely on people's like learn Polish easily or learn Polish, learn Polish in six months, I'm struggling not to swear, my friends. It's just total bull. You will not learn Polish in six months. Sorry, 99% of people will not be able to do that. Um, Paul is recommending Polski's Annual. Okay, so shout out to Polski's Annual. Guys, there's so much material out there for you to be learning. Um, let's have a look more. Ben Jones, what's the biggest positive about living in Poland compared to England, Patrick? Uh, ben, I'm going to keep it on the subject, which is my Polish language skills have just gone boom. And as a result of that, I'm a different person. I'm a better person. My language, it, just everything. I've changed as a person. I'm not 27 anymore. I'm almost 37. So I'm coming up on my 37th birthday. I'm a father of two kids. I've got a business in Polish. I help Polish parents raise children. It's crazy. Never would have been able to do that staying in the UK. I recommend it to everyone. If you're young, um, what's, what can you lose? What are the benefits of moving to a, to a foreign country? It opens your perspective on you as a person. You will stand for the first time on your own two feet. You will have no one to rely on. No one will be able to help you. All of the contacts, the language, the experience, the cultural knowledge won't not count, but it won't count as much of what you've got up in here. That first year I talked about it, the loneliness of moving to Poland, the loneliness of not having any friends of being stuck in a little tiny apartment and just not being able to get those creature comforts that I love, not having money, feeling like an idiot, feeling like I was wasting my time, having my friends even laugh at me for even thinking about it, saying, you'll come back so quickly. That made me a better person. Vonata, I come back to this, my friend. We look for pain-seeking activities, not for pleasure-seeking activities. If you want to stay in your comfort zone, stay in your home country. If you want to push yourself forward as a person, learn new skills, stand on your own two feet, um, develop, improve your intellectual capability. Like I say, learning Polish was the absolute single biggest intellectual achievement of my life. You will do that coming to Poland. Uh, Vonatar, it's because my goal is citizenship, so passing that B1 exam is like a huge watershed for me. Okay, Vonatar, I'm super grateful for all of your comments because every single one of them um, helps me with a different aspect of learning Polish. So guys, keep on keep on writing with comments and things. If you disagree, write to me right now because I'm going to try and explain all... This is like the one time where I'm going to brain dump everything I've ever wanted to talk about Polish uh, in, a, in a live. I've been talking for 75 minutes. I'm going to have to have a drink of water. So, Bonatar, you're actually in a situation, and I think I was in the same situation many times. I, I set myself this goal and became frustrated that I didn't get there, and it became associated with so many different things. So, for example, I wanted to stay in Poland. I knew that landing Polish was crucial to that, and I still believe it is. I, I don't want any of you guys to be the typical expat, and I say this with all due respect, who's lived in Poland for 20 years and can barely order something in a restaurant. I just think that's such a great shame. I don't want you to be any, any of you to be in that situation. When we attach a huge amount of emotional weight to an outcome, then naturally it no longer becomes fun and starts to become difficult. So we're putting ourselves, and I, I'm, con I'm conscious that I'm slightly contradicting myself here. We need to be comfortable with being in a painful position, but we need to make it as pleasurable as possible. So again, this is why doing all the tips that I've mentioned today interpreting this against your own language style is going to be um, important. But Vonatar, I would say disengage. You go and do the B1 exam just for the sheer hell of it. If you fail, what do you learn from that failing? Write down exactly what you learned from that experience. If you follow all the tips I've mentioned today, uh, use the two that you're not doing. Just just do the one, done, do the one or two things that you weren't doing so far. Do the B1 exam, and if you fail, doesn't matter. You can try it again in six months. Work on the things that you, you know, if you get with the right teacher, that teacher will be able to tell you why you failed as well. You'll be able to know um, why you failed and you'll be able to work on the area where you're, I say weakest. I don't mean weakest, where you just need more help and more time and more energy. Remember the words we use like failure and watershed in your case, like the B1 is associated with citizenship, which is this huge life-changing moment. I understand. Um, disengage it from that. Just see it as yet another rung to climb on the ladder. Just keep 
looking at the rung ahead rather than the rung associated with this huge life-changing moment for you. Uh, another question, how do you force natives to speak Polish to you? Often they hear my accent and switch to English and I have to force them back to Polish. How did you do that in the past? Uh, great question. Nothing irritates me more. Nothing makes me more physically sick than when someone tries to speak English to me. I literally have this super deep rooted physical nauseous reaction to it and it offends me. Sometimes I, this is like my animal brain coming out here. My, my, um, uh, I don't even know what the word is in English for that. Chao Migdorvata just gets activated. It's like, can't you see I'm trying to learn Polish? I am Polish. Yeah. The answer is they may be speaking English to you because they want to practice their English. Um, they may be speaking English to you because they think it's more comfortable for you. You can just gently remind them and say, I move to Kupapol school, so today I'm only speaking Polish, or Chao Bishmi Roz my very Papal school. Um, there are certain situations in which I would speak in English because, for example, if it's a work negotiation about a budget, let's say I was working as a director in a company a few years ago, we want to get some more budget for a particular project, I'd probably choose to use English for that conversation if the other person was, was English just because I really need to get that outcome. So again, you need to bend with the river. There'll be situations in which um, you'll want to speak in English and it makes sense. Uh, don't heap guilt on yourself because you haven't um, you haven't that time spoken in Polish. But for example, the the, the simple best way I did for not answering that question is I just had this little sign on me saying "Dziś de Kopopolsku," and people laughed and people found it funny. But they were also really really considerate and they did that day speak to me only in Polish. If you fail, I read if you fail the B one exam, you can't take it again for a year. That also scares me. That is not true. You can go with an exam set by a language school online where they test you online. Um, and in any case, it may well take you a year to get to wherever you are, depending on what results you are. So take an exam with a different school. It doesn't have to be with the Komisja in Zikoposkiego, Jako, Obseko, those crazy guys that's really, really hard. That said, be careful what school you go with because they may be giving you an easy exam. So there's this school. Uh, I'm not going to mention them in Warsaw, but they gave you like this fake scores where you were moving from a1 to a2 and everybody i ever know that went to that school in warsaw said that they they said they were a2 but they weren't so just be careful who you're working with if they give you an exam try and make it as close to the real one as possible i speak poland yeah move your proposal school <laughs> tomas <laughs> you speak uh you speak polish all right but your english needs a little bit of work my friend i'm laughing at you and i apologize for that because any effort towards your goal is to be praised uh, any mistake is to be given constructive feedback but again this is something deep rooted where we laugh at our own we laugh at other people's mistakes we belittle them it says more about us than it does about those people every time you make a mistake you're moving forward every time you avoid making a mistake you're moving backwards i'm the same i don't like it when polish people speak to me in english about whether i'm in england or poland the only time i don't mind is if they are wanting to learn english okay so renata and all those people in these situations if you have this problem regularly with people, explain to them that you would prefer to learn Polish. And 95% of the time, those people will understand that fact and take it into account. Your compromise, your złote środek, as we say in Polish, is for that person to speak to you in English and for you to speak to them in Polish. It's weird, slightly odd, but it makes sense. That person gets the English they want, you get the Polish you want. We're all happy. Um, Agree on expats. Uh, have a work colleague been here 20 years. When we go to the restaurant, he orders in English and I die of embarrassment. I, I find it just so painful, which is why you don't want to spend time around those people. If you if you genuinely wish to learn Polish, don't spend time with those people. Because we talk about mindset, guys. We talk about attitude. Those are people who go, they'll, they'll even say to you, I remember one guy said to me, I don't like people like you. And he kind of meant it as a joke, but actually he was right. It's like, what, people who try, people who make an effort, people who put in the hard yards. Guys, those four years where I was learning Polish up until 2014, did the exam, etc. I was getting up at five o'clock in the morning to do my Polish homework and had classes at six o'clock in the morning so I could do a full day's work. I was knackered. Those are people who have chosen to take the easy street and they live on the surface. And I, and I don't criticize them. I, it, it's natural human behavior to, to do that. But if you spend time around those people, you will be like those people. Remember, you are the sum of the six people you spend the most time around. Um. Okay, if you've got questions for me, guys. Uh, oh, dude, Vonatar says, so that's interesting. I thought it was only the state exam for citizenship, not any language school certificate. So Vonatar, 
you're right. Um, I think they changed the rules, and I think you can now, with a certificate from um, the uh, from any language school, if I remember, they they did this, and this was happening more or less the time when I did my exam, and they went mental. The commissaire, Jens uh, Kaposke, I'll, I'll get it out for you guys. Kind of, uh, it's funny. I may even have the results here. So, is it really hard? I'll talk about the exam. Um, I turned up at this place, and there was one random British guy, i.e., me, a bunch of Ukrainians and um some really random odd job people from all sorts of different questions places one of them was like from bangladesh you know this kind of stuff and i've never been so stressed in my life i hate exams i've avoided them i talked to you about i didn't do exams at a1 a2 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 I, I avoided all that stuff um but i wanted to um i can't remember why i wanted to do it but i just wanted to do it let me see if i can find my results and uh, I, I felt absolutely shattered. It was one of the single most exhausting um, things I've done in my life. And at a certain point, they let us out for a 20-minute break. And I went and sat on a bench and had a Mars bar and a Red Bull. And by pure chance, my girlfriend and her mum just literally walked past me in the park. And they said I've, they'd never seen me look so defeated in their lives. My head was hurting. Everything was aching. It was awful. I even thought about just walking out and walking away because I just thought I'm never going to do this. And then in the, the second section, we had, I can't find the results here. The second section, we had the um, verbal, the oral exam. And I sat down against these two ladies and I had to talk about segregacja w Polsce. So rubbish collecting in Polish. And I gave them a question at the start. I said, czy chcecie, żeby mówił tak potocznie, czy tak poprawnie? Uh, do you want me to speak um, kind of slang Polish or more correct Polish? And they said, speak how you normally would. And because I'd spent so much time with geezers and lads going to Polish football games and do it, I just said, okay, I'm going to talk like I would talk to my mate. And I went on some rant about how rubbish collecting is dreadful and it's, it's shameful for me to see people picking through rubbish piles and, and that kind of thing. I think I, my score was 96% in the oral exam, whereas the grammar was rubbish. And this comes back to a subject which I've already explored before. Everyone is good at some things and worse at others. And for me, oral, in, uh, oral Polish has always been my absolute standout best. Grammar, meh. Whereas I think, as I've said before, Paul, who's talked about his approach today and has been a really great participant, ha will probably end up in the end being a better, grammatically better speaker. Um, so... Uh, Again, is it hard? Depends where you're best at. There's um, there's an oral exam, there's a written exam, there's a listening exam, uh, and there's a writing exam. So writing is typically the hardest thing for anyone because we do so little writing. I haven't even talked about podcasts, guys, uh, and I highly recommend um, that you listen to podcasts. So here's a super simple way that you can increase your input. We can't afford to do classes, and we don't really want to do classes 20, 30 hours a week. It would that would be a great way to progress, even if we were living in a foreign country. Um, but uh, we can listen to podcasts. So one of the things I did really early on was I found Talk FM, and they had all these Polish language discussions. And again, I didn't focus on trying to understand. I just picked out words and thought, hmm, I think I'm understanding this. And, and again, we're talking about moving from unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence to conscious competence and that's the point we're thinking ah i think i may understand what this is and then you get to conscious competence where you're not even listening to it because you already know what they're talking about philip move your proposal school. philip we have done today in 90 minutes a super in-depth look at the polish language um it's been a little chaotic i've given about 15 16 tips on how to learn polish and we've had a really in-depth conversation guys i'm so proud of you for staying with me with this live and uh, i'm so happy that finally i've got around to doing this um i was i was trying to do this beautiful perfect short seven minute video and then i realized like you can't talk about learning a hundred thousand words and 10 years of or 13 years of experience in a six or seven minute video you need to do this uh, long term. So let's have a look. Uh, Michal, do you have any problems in the UK understanding English speakers use different accents? No, because I'm a native speaker. Um, Philip, move your papa's school. <laughs> Good morning. Just woken up on the East Coast of America. I've been learning Polish for many years now. It isn't easy, so I respect anyone who's taken on the challenge. Keep pushing everybody. Yeah, man, that's what I like. I like Americans' positive can-do attitude. Uh, Vonata, my oral Polish is poor, but my grammar is usually 99%. So Vonata, dude, we, I think we've identified here. For people who are grammatically excellent, you're probably 
a process oriented logic driven person so you'll be more focused in your speech on making sure the words that you say are right i am a vision oriented details i don't like detail detail bores me i don't need things to be a b c d i can jump from a to d then back to b then to d and then to c again and why is this important that kind of learner will be talking and making mistakes and feeling okay loving the mistakes too comfortable with the mistakes actually like i'm just too comfortable with polish language mistakes the process orientated person is going to think out loud how it's, it's going to think how do i need to say this so it's correct not how do i need to say this so it's understood both approaches have pluses and minuses there's a way of swimming with no technique where you can make progress moving forward but eventually you're not going to become a champion swimmer if you focus on the technique of getting the one that that works i see this as this uh, short term versus long term as i've already said i consciously decided to just not really try that hard with endings on cases and just merge them etc because i just wanted to get across as much possible as po uh, information as possible michal so it's like i do not have problems understanding people from silesia well accents in poland are a little bit difficult because of the political turmoil and difficulty that's gone through um uh polish society and schlansk and all the rest of it so those accents are, are not as diverse and are not as um not as crazy as they are in the uk um, and typically they come down to Swovnitstvo, so, um, you know, random words. Papuchki, for example, for Japonki, uh, Chiklapsa, to whatever the hell they call them in, in Warsaw. I know the Papuchki from Wrocław because that's where I first came. So that's slippers, guys. And I use that word here in Warsaw. And my wife, who's from Warsaw, Warsaw grandmother, proper Warszawianka, uh, it's like, what the hell's that? <laughs> so actually, I know words in Polish that she doesn't even know. Um, let's keep going. James, how did you get on with the seven cases when you first started learning Polish? They made me want to bash my head against the table. James, I've talked for 90 minutes now about many of these different subjects, so uh, I'm probably going to not answer that question. But yeah, again, James, rewatch this video if you weren't here with us from the start, and you'll get your answer to that question. Guys, if you've got more questions for me, I'm happy to stay around now for about five or ten more minutes. I've been talking literally nonstop now for 90 minutes, so I'm going to just have another drink of water. Oh, that feels good. Maybe I'll talk about people disliking you and hating on you. So I've never, ever said on the internet that I'm a good Polish speaker. Many Polish people have said to you, oh, you speak great Polish. And um, do you know what? That was interesting. They said it in 2010 when I spoke rubbish Polish. They said it in 2011 when I spoke rubbish Polish. They said it in 2012 when I spoke rubbish Polish. Nobody really says this to me anymore. In fact, I, it's an amazing moment where I'm having a conversation with someone and they don't even reference the fact that I'm a foreigner. They must know because I have a strong accent. I have no disputing that. It's hard to change your accent when you're 27. That's like, guys, I haven't even talked about accent. I've had accent classes. I've had a few. Um, it's useful information and I kind of wish that I learned it from the start rather than waiting until the end. Because, for example, and the way that I pronounce E and U, uh, is very, very different because your tongue through childhood and all, all the years that you live your life up until you learn Polish, th these are muscles. So you need to retrain the muscles of your mouth, where you position your tongue in your mouth, how you, wh what part of your palate, um, the top of your mouth, your tongue touches, all of these things are going to impact your accent. Um, maybe one day I'll do a episode, by the way, with um, a lady who I used to do accents uh, with. I've worked on it a little bit, but not very much. So people were telling me my Polish was great. Was it great? No, objectively it wasn't. I hadn't passed any exams. I wasn't able to work in the language. <coughs> I'd only been doing it for a couple of years. So I would also ignore that praise and just focus on what you know. Your objective is to move from A1 to A2, B1 to B2, C1 to C2. Focus, uh, focus. see, that's like one of those moments where the word just comes in. Focus, focus on uh so focus actually on the things that you've got ahead of you um i would discount both praise and criticism because you shouldn't have the language approach that your progress is measured by other people's opinions of you i've got people on the internet who literally laugh at my polish uh, and say it's rubbish how can you listen to this people and i don't take a blind bit of notice not i'm not telling you this because i want to praise myself it's all about mindset i'm not here to to focus on other people's um uh 
impression. Vonatar, but Paddy, watching your interview with Morawiecki, the Polish Prime Minister, that's how you know your Polish is amazing. Vonatar, I'm going to tell you an interesting fact about that I've never talked about. I knew I was going to interview the Polish Prime Minister. I found out on Thursday. The interview was meant to be on Sunday. Whoa. Okay. Finally managed to, to, to get an interview with him. They didn't know what language it was going to be in. And I'm like, guys, I need to know because if this is in Polish, I, I've, I've got to think about this, you know? And then they said it'll probably be in English. And then on the day, as I'm traveling to get to the interview and I was late and in a rush and I almost missed the train, super stressed, drenched in sweat. On the day they said, oh, it might be in Polish. And I'm like, what do you mean it might be in Polish? I've, 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 I can't... I can't interview the Polish Prime Minister. I get, what, ah. They said, you'll have to just decide with the Prime Minister. So we went in there. I met the Prime Minister. And, and I said, Prime Minister in Polish, I said, Prime Minister, we need to decide, do we do this in English or Polish? And he said, well, what do you think? And I said, I said again, I had a choice. And you will have this choice in many different moments, the same choice I have with the Polish Prime Minister. Do I do the thing that's easy for me or the thing that's hard for me? And I said, well, we can do this in English, but since this is an exclusive interview, it's talking about his time in fighting solidarity. I don't care about your political opinions. It was just an interesting story. Uh, but since this is the first time you talked about it, it's probably best to get this message out to a Polish language uh, audience. So we said, okay, let's do it in Polish. And uh, Vonata, I was literally dude like, oh, sugar. Okay, I didn't prepare any questions in Polish. I haven't had any time. I've been in a rush, drenched in sweat, like physically exhausted by three days of nonstop work. Let's just go for it. <laughs> and what you see on my face is me literally trying to think of the questions in Polish that I had in English and all these other kind of things. Uh, this is where you know that you're consciously, uh, unconsciously competent because you're able to transition from one language to, to the next. Um Tomas, the reason why your Polish may be better after a short break may have to do with the fact that our brains need some break to properly organize information. Absolutely. I think you've touched on a, on a really important issue here, which is learning is not a painful experience. It shouldn't be hard. The reason why you have this approach is because our childhood and our education at school was based on the fact that if you don't do it well, you get punished. Your punishment is a worse grade. Your punishment is the teacher shouting at you. Your punishment is your parents shouting at you. And deep in our minds, we have this impression that if we're not suffering we're not learning learning is meant to be fun and also we learn best when we rest so if we work for 18 hours a day we're not more effective we don't get more done we get less done we know this but we still attribute hours in with hours out so resting your brain um i absolutely think is, is a great idea uh, i work so much in polish now that i need time to rest my brain in english because because it it's tiring the brain is a muscle. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of energy that goes up to your brain. So if you're speaking in Polish language, you're naturally going to feel tired at the end of the day. If you work yourself into the ground, your Polish will naturally be worse because you're tired. Let's keep going. Let's have a look at what, um, let's have a look at some more questions. Uh, just join choirs that sing in Polish. Great way to study diction. Uh, organic organist. Awesome point, my friend. Singing is better than, um, uh, speaking so here's the way for example somebody's asked about um somebody's asked about learning cases here's the way that i learned how to use the um dopelniac genitive possessions negations absences times and dates quantities wishes and needs wishes and needs and i started to make it into a song but possessions negations absences times and dates times and dates quantities wishes and needs wishes and needs wishes and needs but get possessions negations absences times and dates times and dates quantities wishes and needs wishes and needs wishes and needs i'm not joking guys i said that so often and it became this sort of rappy song type thing that six or seven or eight years later i can remember it like that um, there are loads of different memorization tools that you can use, including coloring, um, including um, keywords. So making mnemonics um, where you have, for example, uh, possessions, negations, absence, times and dates is P-N-A-T-D, P-N-A-T-D. So we learn like that. We don't learn by by trying to cram in as many words as possible. So if you haven't spent time learning about how to learn, do that alongside learning Polish because you need to work on your own style and you need to break out of the habits of learning school because you have to, as opposed to learning because you want to. So joining choirs, singing, learning through singing, um, using music to learn, boom, organic organist. Dude, you're awesome. Um, 
Tomash, this is why if you can't solve a problem, it's a good idea to take a few braids break from it before getting back to it. Absolutely couldn't agree more. And Polish is exactly the same. The point is, again, not forcing as much in as possible in the shorter space of time, but just going at the speed you need to to make progress. As long as you're pushing yourself, learning new things, sticking to your classes and doing your homework, you will be making progress. Garrett, what is your ultimate goal with Polish? Some long-term project or idea? Garrett, I remember you wrote at the start that um, you you've just moved to Poland. So I wanted to learn Polish for the first three years but before I moved to Poland just to be able to communicate with my then girlfriend's parents. And I fell in love with the country and have gone through the typical immigrant's journey, falling in love, falling out of love, going through all of the emotional different steps that you have. When I moved to Poland, it became very clear to me very early on that if I didn't want to only be an English teacher because I didn't have very many transferable skills, I was 27, I'd worked in government. If I wanted to live for longer than a year or two in Poland and be happy and, and successful and use the talents and skills I have, I had to learn Polish. It was a different world. Poland's an easier country to live in now than it ever has been um, when you speak English. And that's both a good and a bad thing. I don't want to, I never wanted to be that, that expat who's been here for 20 years who still can't order in a restaurant like um, uh, like uh, Vonato talked about. Um, so what was my goal? My goal, I guess, um, thinking back to those first early years, I dreamt about being on TV and I dreamt about um, making films and I dreamt about reading books and having conversations with people. And I was sitting on the bus in that first year traveling to another English teaching class because I taught English at the start. Unhappy that because I, I didn't like it. Teaching is a really hard discipline. It doesn't get enough respect. And I remember hearing people talking around me and I felt um, depressed and sad that I couldn't speak with them and, and listen to them, but also a little bit paranoid. And it was a weird experience. Um, it's left me now, obviously. But I felt super uncomfortable that I couldn't understand what language these people were talking in. And maybe it was because I was a little a typical Brit who hadn't spent very much time in foreign countries. That feeling of awkwardness and uncomfortableness was not something I wanted to live in. Uh, and I was very, very determined to learn Polish because it was the only way I was going to be able to succeed. I've, um, I've worked as a director in Polish agencies. I've, I run my own business now in Polish. It's entirely doable. But I'm also aware, Garrett, of the Peter principle. So everybody learns to a certain level, the level of incompetence. I've plateaued since probably uh, 2016. I haven't had any Polish classes regularly since about 2014, 2015. I got to B2 and then I just kind of went easy street. And, then, and I've been learning because everything you do is learning. You don't have to only be classes. But I'm absolutely determined to go back to two times 90 minute classes plus homework to take me from B2, C1, uh, kind of hovering around those levels, depending on which category, whether it's reading, writing, speaking, uh, or grammar, um, back up to C2. And Garrett, that's the most amazing feeling in the world where you have a conversation with someone that's quite in-depth, quite technical about fixing your car or a medical problem or the psychology of children, and they don't even mention that you're a foreigner. Or they say, when did you leave Poland? In other words, you're a Polish person who just left and came back after a few years and maybe missed out some crucial years uh, in in your childhood. Um, all right, let's have a look. How would you read my nickname, Matek? Well, Matek is Matki Vlichbo Mnogiev So um, uh, Matek has asked, what's Matek? How would I read it? Matek. Mate K, I don't know, not entirely sure what you're on about there, dude. Um, Vonata, I often take breaks between lessons up to six months. People say this is bad, but my Polish actually improves in the breaks. I would say you want to keep learning. So breaks are okay, but six months is, you need the formal language learning of going with a teacher because it's the life raft which is pushing you forward. Everything else, the dipping into the water, the learning individual words, trial and error, conversations, that's you paddling your oar. But if you don't have the life raft of the grammar and the person who studies the philology, that six months will be good, but I would say make it maybe a month and then go straight back into teaching. Dariusz, zapraszam na Zamość. Słuchaj, Dariuszu, po co mi przykro stary, nigdy nie byłem w Zamościu. How, how is that possible? Embarrassing. Patrick, you're not the only one that is forgetting his native language. I work so much in English that when I get back home, I have a hard time speaking with the family. Thomas, completely agree. I feel stupid and awkward 
Garrett, this would be interesting for you. Going back to the UK with my Polish mates, uh, with my British mates, when we're in the pub, I feel like the odd one out. I feel like a foreigner because I don't speak English like I used to. And that's one of the things I'm kind of sad about. I miss their level of verbal dexterity, but I, I, speaking for two hours in English, pretty uncommon for me right now. Uh, right, you're legit British. All the British call me mate K, and I'm okay with this. Matek, okay. To znaczy, ja jestem legit Polakiem, ponieważ ja to zinterpretowałem pod kątem języka polskiego. All right, guys, I'm, I'm showing off now. All right, so guys, I'm going to end the conversation. I'd like you to write in the comments, have you enjoyed today's conversation? Are there any other things that you'd like me to talk about on this channel? I'd be happy to um, do that for, with you and for you. I'm going to have a sip of water. I'm super proud of you. You can also share this episode with anyone you think might be learning Polish. If they've got almost two hours to learn, I think they could get a lot of benefit out of this. Matthew, dang, just joined now. Don't worry, Matthew, I'm going to publish this live. It's going to be on my channel forever, so you can go back and watch it. We've had 15 top tips. There's a lot in there. Emmy, I am learning Polish via Rosetta Stone. What are your thoughts on this? Emmy, I, I didn't have all of those things. So I'm not in a position to uh, to measure them. But again, if you feel like you're making progress, if it works for you, fine. You know, don't do what I say. Do what works for you, but learn to learn. Garrett, thanks, Patrick. This has been massively helpful. Awesome. Dude, I'm super happy. I really appreciate it. Organic Organist, I thank you, my friend. Bardzo dziękuję. Pozdrawiam z Warszawa. I'm in Warszawa. So, take Philly. So, <laughs> in Usunov. Uh, where my journey in Poland started. And I remember saying, I will never move back to this journey to in Warsaw ever again. And 10 years later, here I am. So what do you know? Uh, grand, I'll rewatch it. So all right, Matthew. <laughs> okay, guys, so give me some feedback. What did you like? Um, are there any other subjects that you'd like us to cover? I'm super glad. Świetna accent. Justyna, oh my God. Oh my God. Justyna has the longest, hardest language uh, language surname. Let's do. Let's have some fun with this right now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, po dwóch godzinach ja potrzebuję przerwy, zanim to staje. Do you drink? Do you, ah, one last topic, my guys. Do you speak better Polish when you're slightly drunk? Yes, you do. <laughs> Why is that? Because as you get drunk, your inhibitions, those doubts and fears and things that are holding you back that are up here, melt away. And at least for a bit, you are who you truly are. You're actually the language speaker you could be if you got rid of those mindset issues. The answer is not to... Dziękuję za wsparcie w Wadysławie. Oh, you're that guy. Okay, okay. Because you wrote Wadysław in Instagram. I was like, what the hell is that? Filip uh, Popolsku, um, thank you. Uh, uh, thanks, Patrick. I'll definitely get caught up on the rest of the stream. Thank you, dude. Really appreciate it. Michal, same in any foreign language. Absolutely agree. Same rules apply. Justyna's last name isn't real. It's from a movie. Yeah, it's that. I don't want to do it now. Uh, all right, guys. Fajnie się oglądał. Nie spodziewałem się tego, że będę tego oglądać do samego końca. How I started the Second World War comedy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, guys. Super grateful. Thank you very much for joining me. Please do share this stream with anyone you think might be interested in learning Polish. I am um, so happy I've been able to share 13 years of accumulated thoughts. And again, it's not about me. It's about... Um, uh, you guys being the best version of yourself you can be and fulfilling your potential to be po prostu zajebiściem, zajebiści mówcy w języku polskim. Da się jak najbardziej. You can do it. I believe in you. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate spending this time with you. Really appreciate it. So this video will be published shortly and I'll see you online.